Hearing special counsel Robert Mueller. Now, the Justice Department appointed him to lead the Russia investigation. Earlier, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein faced questions on the reports from senators. Why isn't Jeff Sessions here today? Well, Senator, uh, uh, my understanding is consistent with what was in the Attorney General's letter. I don't know of any other reasons beyond what uh, uh, he set forth publicly. Okay. Uh, it's 13 June. Do you know of any reason for cause to fire Mr. Mueller? as of this date? No, I do not, Senator. And that would be your decision if that ever happened, right? That's correct. And you're going to make it nobody else? As long as I'm in this position, Senator, it'll be my responsibility to make that decision. Well, I'm glad you're in this position. All right, CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman is following the latest for us, and she's here. So listen, Ricky, there are a lot of questions about how independent can this independent prosecutor be and who would ultimately be responsible for firing him if that's what came to be it's rosenstein at least that's what it sounds like well it is rosenstein i mean you can go all the way back to the era of watergate and when the president asked that Archibald Cox Act, in terms of firing Archibald Cox, walked. So you have Archibald Cox walking, Elliot Richardson. You had all of these actions that happened. So if President Trump should decide, which would be quite unwise, to get rid of Robert Mueller, who is the independent of independence in, in terms of his reputation, uh, respect on both sides of the aisle, that at that point, I would predict, if it should ever come to pass, that Rosenstein would walk. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're already hearing that he, even if he got an order from the president, which he said he didn't, he said, uh, testified in front of these uh, senators today, that he, he wouldn't follow that, that he's sticking to this and there's no reason at this point to fire Robert Mueller. Um, just sticking with this idea, though, what would it be, in, in what would make the case to let Robert Mueller go. I mean, why is this even out there as a potential thing? Mm -hmm. Well, the reason it is out there, I think, was explained by Newt Gingrich this morning on CBS This Morning. And this is their perspective. I'm not saying it is my perspective. I want that to be clear. There is in conservatives. There is in, there is in conservative Republicans. What Newt Gingrich was saying is this. Look, Robert Mueller needs to staff up uh, his investigation. So he has gone out and he is hiring lawyers. But the lawyers that he has hired thus far, says Mr. Gingrich, are people who were Democrats and in the Clinton camp. So Mr. Gingrich says he's not independent. He says, I'll be satisfied if he hires as many pro-Trump lawyers as he does pro-Clinton lawyers, because otherwise he's not independent. Well, I beg to differ, simply on this point of view. You have to look at whether someone is affiliated with either party, whether they were active in the Democratic Party or in the Republican Party at one point or another. When you have lawyers who are working for the Department of Justice, they know that their role is to be independent. When you listen to Mr. Rosenstein's testimony today, you can certainly see what the pride that he takes and that others in his position take, that when you're a member of the Department of Justice, that your role is to do justice. It's on the border of the building of the Department of Justice that justice, the Department of Justice, Justice works when justice is done. And I'm paraphrasing that border on the building. But you, I have enormous respect for the Department of Justice. And I, I just don't see that someone's political affiliation is going to change Robert Mueller's work into a witch hunt. Yeah. Others will differ. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Lindsey Graham asked uh, Rosenstein that question outright. Mm -hmm. Should where you donate your money, your political donations, because to be fired and you know he said absolutely not but he was also Lindsey Graham was also asking about something else and don't know where he got this from but he was asking whether or not some of the members of Mueller's staff may have actually worked for Hillary Clinton would that be reason not necessarily mm -hmm. um, because you have to remember that people who want to go to Washington may also work 
for the Clintons, were, have worked for the Clintons or uh, on their campaign at one time or another, perhaps even for the Clinton Foundation. Yeah, We've heard they're that a that's, legacy family That's here. right. And you would also have people who might have worked not only for Donald Trump's campaign, for ha perhaps for the Bushes, yeah, any of the Bushes, that is the elder, the younger, or Jeb. Mm -hmm. um, Washington is kind of its own little land, and that what happens is people do work for others. You know, there's you could be a lifelong Democrat and you could have been asked by uh, George Herbert Walker Bush or George W. Bush to come work for the Department of Justice. And I bet you would have been proud to do it. OK, so in your in your professional opinion here, this is a non-starter. I would hope it's a non-starter. Okay. I think I would be horrified if it really is something that would come to pass, because then I think you do have what we would consider a constitutional crisis. Oh, boy. All right. Um, one thing I wanted you to sort of sh shed some light on here, uh, a lot of what was asked uh, uh, to Rosenstein in this committee, this Appropriations Committee today, um, seems to be about the scope of his boss, Jeff Sessions, recusal uh, as it relates to him in this Russia collusion investigation. Can you explain this a little bit more? We know he's recused himself um, because of potential contacts with um, Sergei Kislyak. Explain to us why this is so important, why this keeps coming back to sort of haunt Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Sessions. The, the point of recusal is as old as the point of justice in America, whether it's for a judge or whether it's a prosecutor or a defense lawyer. What you're looking at is not only an act of impropriety, but much more important, it's the appearance of impropriety when there may be no impropriety whatsoever. So if there is anything about the appearance of impropriety, that's what's written into the canons of ethics that lawyers and judges follow. You must recuse yourself. The simplest example I could give you would be a judge who holds stock, a major amount of stock, in a company. And then there is litigation in front of him concerning that company. Well, even though it's just something in his stock portfolio, the appearance of impropriety would make that judge recuse himself or herself. Here, what you have is this Russian collusion investigation and the Russian uh, possibility of interfering with the elections. When Jeff Sessions was working for the Trump campaign and Jeff Sessions may have had contacts with the Russians, well, the appearance of impropriety alone must cause him to recuse himself. Where this starts to get dicey, and it's where I think this committee is going to be very concerned, is if... Jeff Sessions recused himself altogether, which he was supposed to do, then how does he wind up in any way, shape or form being involved in the firing of Jim Comey when Mr. T President Trump went on TV with Lester Holt and says it was because of the Russian investigation. So that's a problem. Yeah, he said it was on his mind. He initially blamed the memo, correct, mm -hmm. Rosenstein, and then eventually said, well, no, the Russian investigation was on my mind. Um, so, you know, moving forward, looking ahead to Jeff Sessions, he's going to be testifying uh, this afternoon, and there's a lot of talk about whether or not he will be as open and as direct as former FBI Director James Comey. I think probably not, um, because he's still working for the president, of right? Of course. So let's talk about this idea of executive privilege. Um, what does it mean? Who can determine what is privileged conversation? Executive privilege is something that is greatly misunderstood. It's a term that's bandied about all the time, and people really don't know what it means. If uh, our v viewers really want to know what it means, they should look up United States versus Nixon, because it is explained in, in much detail. It is a privilege of the president, and the president is the person who can exercise the privilege. Now, it is really narrow, and it has great boundaries. Just because you say you, you exercise executive privilege to prevent someone who works from you from testifying or from providing information doesn't mean that you actually have it. Because it has to be a matter of national security, and it has to be a matter that if disclosed, would really open up um, something that should not be made public. Mm. Now, 
You cannot assert executive privilege to prevent someone from testifying about criminal activity or fraudulent activity. It's just like the attorney-client privilege. The privilege goes out the window if there's criminal activity or fraudulent activity. And we know all the way back to U.S. versus Nixon, when it came time for the tapes, tapes had to come out. Mm -hmm. All right, so just to put you in the shoes of the senators today, you're up on that dais. What's the one question you want to ask Jeff Sessions? Well, I would say the one question, I, well, I have many questions <laughs> I would like to ask, but the first one that pops into my mind is that uh, is involving what Mr. Comey testified to about Jeff Sessions leaving the room mm -hmm. uh, with Jared Kushner when uh, Jim Comey was left with the president. Uh, Jim Comey described him as kind of hanging back, that Jeff Sessions hung back, and that it obviously must have bothered Mr. Sessions. I think that was risky testimony on the part of Mr. Comey, because Jeff Sessions may simply say, I wasn't hanging back. The president told me to leave. I respected the president's order. I left. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Yeah, um, but uh, after that, I suspect there'll be a number of other questions. Oh, that's the, the follow-ups are there. You know, yes. it's like when we prepare an interview and you see follow. Yes, follow, yes, follow. yes. That's what we're looking Definitely. at. Definitely. Ricky Kleeman, thank you so much. Thank you. We'll see.